Hey guys, welcome to Fearless Cooking. So I'm trying this new uh, kind of frequency where I'm going to do this like once a month. And if, if I see, hey, you know, I'm like bored and I've just absolutely got all the content developed that I need to develop, then I'll start doing it a little bit more frequent, frequently. But I'm trying to, to build out all this stuff for my coaching program. So anyway, today we're doing a... Uh, a stir fry, and I'm, I'm using the wok for it. We're we're, we're going to use well, what I'm using for this, and you can use different proteins and different veggies. But I'm doing chicken, uh, asparagus, mushrooms, uh, ginger, garlic. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, cornstarch for the uh, sauce at the end, uh, and I'm going to be using a tamari, which is a soy is a uh, wheat-free soy sauce. Uh, I'll use a little bit of toasted sesame oil, uh, and then, of course, I'm gonna use some fish, stuff, fish stuff sauce. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of white wine. So I, I've got the oven, I had the oven preheated. You wanna preheat, if you're gonna use um, uh, cauliflower rice, then I would suggest putting your oven to like 400 degrees and then do the cauliflower rice. I'm gonna go ahead and get this and get this in the oven first. Um, you know, with this, obviously, you can use regular rice. And what I do with this is I just use a, uh, put a towel around it and then smack it with a mallet. One of the reasons that I have, like, started kind of pimping the wok recently is I used to, I used to like stir fry, but I, until recently, I didn't know I was doing it wrong for years. I mean, like a long time. I always had way too much oil in the wok. So what I, fi what I figured out is when you put just a trace amount in there, the wok gets a whole lot hotter, the stuff cooks faster, it's not so oil soaked, and I just enjoyed it a lot. So if people don't have a wok, what? You can use a skillet, you can use a nonstick skillet, or you could use a like a, a carbon steel skillet, or you could probably use a cast iron as well. Um, it, you know, it, it, the thing is with a cast iron for me, it's a lot harder to kind of, you, you know, do the stuff to get it, the stuff in there to hop. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and that's certainly possible. Yes. This is still the same hold true for the amount of oil and the heat? Yeah, you know, I, I would say that depends on how non-stick the surface is. Uh -huh. So, I mean, and like with my wok, it's got some kind of bare spots in it, so it's not like perfectly seasoned. Mm -hmm. But what I've, what I've seen is, is that it, it, it works pretty well. The other thing that I bought that I've, I've been a huge fan of is one of these kind of wok spatulas um because it's long enough that you know i'm not don't have my hand down in there um with with something that had a shorter handle on it and that that kind of shovel on there kind of helps because i always just cook the stuff in the wok and then i'm constantly moving it over once that's once each batch is finished into kind of a like my general holding bowl and then once i've heard everything's done i dump it back in the wok after I've made the sauce to get sauce on everything. All right, so, and what I do with this is I'll just pour a little olive oil right in the middle of it. Can you use that blue towel? I think it'd be yeah. easier for people. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Let's get this out of the way. I'm just kind of pour a little bit in the middle. Probably a good tablespoon? Yeah, at least. And then I just kind of mix it in there and spread it out. And then I'll hit it with some salt in just a second. And I'm going to head open the window because one of the things is obviously with when you're cooking with real high heat, you get more smoke produced. Um, and, but I, I think it produces less than when I used to put like a lot more oil in. Mm -hmm. And let's see, here's some salt. I'm not gonna salt this super heavy because 
the fish sauce and the soy sauce both have salt in them. All right, so I'm just going to throw this in the oven. Set a timer? Yeah, why don't you set a timer for 30 minutes? All right, so now then, the, the one thing with, with Chinese food, and, and you know, this is kind of a, basically anything you're going to stir fry, is I want everything prepped ahead of time. This kind of really ups the ante on piece and plat, because once you're cooking with this, everything cooks like super fast. So, and what I'm going to do with this, normally I'm, I will like snap each individual uh, asparagus. This is all pretty thin and none of the ends have a bunch of the purple stuff in them. So I'm just gonna take it and just, I'm gonna probably cut about, what is that, about an inch and a half off the end of all of them, okay? And now so you're then- prepping the uh, asparagus. Yep, I'm okay. prepping the asparagus and then I'm gonna take the asparagus and I'm gonna cut it, um, let's see. I'll cut it two more times. So I'm gonna because I'm I want this in, you know, about two inches. Yeah, so mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's yeah, about two inches. Okay. So if people are using, let's say, broccoli instead of asparagus with their greens, how big a pizza should there? Yeah, broccoli. so you want you'll want like florets. Okay. okay. The thing with broccoli is that it it takes a little bit longer to cook. Okay. So what I would do with it, instead of just trying to do it all with oil, is I would probably add a little bit of water or white wine so that you get some steam action going with that. Yeah. A little bit denser than. Yeah, yeah. It just takes a little bit longer for it to cook. Uh, you know, snow peas are a great option because they cook real fast. Um, what else? Green beans? Well, yeah, green, green beans if you're using the little skinny ones. Mm -hmm. uh, and then bok choy is great, or cabbage is great, because you know that's something that's gonna cook real fast. All right, so now let's do the mushrooms. Okay. And what I do with the mushrooms is, I don't, you know, unless they have like a bunch of dirt on them, I don't wash them. Um, I, what I do is usually just cut the very end off, and then that one's kind of already had it done. And then I, what I'll do is cut them in half, so I've got a flat surface. Okay. I'll show you that. Let me move this out of the way. Yeah. Yeah, the, the thing with stir fry is everything is just the prep. Once you've gotten the prep done, the amount of time it takes for the meal is just, yeah, super fast. And, you know, I think it's, especially when you're not like completely loading it with oil, it, it's a lot healthier. And it's not that, you know, I'm not like phobic of fat, but what I realize is, hey, it's, you know, that is energy. And, you know, I would rather get the fat that I'm consuming out of the, um, out of the food I'm eating, right? In other words, not adding it to my food. And you chose cauliflower rice um, for the stir fry to go over. People could use any other kind of yeah, rice, obviously. Yeah. Just your carbs would be it. Yeah, I, you know what? What I figured out that my my whole goal over the years was to figure out what's the easiest way for people to to like eat great food and manage their weight so that it's effortless. And, and what I realized was. That the more when I start eating a bunch of carbs, all of a sudden I start seeing the weight come back on. So when I when I keep it off, it's like then I can you know whenever I keep the carbs down, I can eat you know all pretty much meat and veggies without having to worry at all about it. And you know to me that's just a, a whole lot simpler than constantly being you know at having this love hate relationship with the scale. And now, once I get these things cut in half, then I'm just going to slice them all kind of thin. Okay. Because the one thing with when you're cooking stir fry is you want things kind of like each batch of stuff, you want it to be roughly the same size so it'll all cook about the same, you know, the same time, right? 
I have a question. Are mushrooms like particularly nutritiously dense or are they just more for texture? It's texture. It's also, it's like, I know that there's, I want to say there's like zinc in them. You know, I know that, in fact, my my able assistant here is going to look that up. I've been doing that on several shows. Yeah, I think it's like, I'm trying to remember what vitamins they have in them. You know, the other thing is like, especially like shiitake mushrooms, those things are used by, um, like in Chinese medicine, as, you know, almost as a, uh, like an herbal remedy. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, what's funny is that, uh, these things will all be, you know, you'll be like, ah, oh, man, this is a bunch of hooey. And then all of a sudden, the next thing, you know, MD Anderson's doing research on stuff like that going, yeah, we've seen that it actually will, you know, kill cancer cells in a, you know, in, in a cell growth. All right, so um, mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Wow, this is this is not showing much as far as uh, there's potassium, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, not there's some pro interesting uh, one percent protein. Yeah, one oh this is one medium mushroom. So yeah, so one. look up shiitake mushrooms. Okay, uh, it's also an article shiitake. Here we go, mushrooms. B vitamins, a lot of B vitamins. Okay, this is this one's a more uh, complete. B vitamins, riboflavin, niacin, selenium, so they potassium. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of vitamins and yeah. nutrients. Yeah, yeah, it looks like they also sort of help with the umami flavor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean that that's a lot of it too. And then for me, it's like. I will cook mushrooms sometimes to have almost as kind of an alternative to like carbs. Like in other words, in, if I'm not going to do like sweet potatoes or, or you know, little baby new potatoes, I might do like mushrooms or zucchini or something just to give a different texture to the meal. So I keep finding articles that link uh, mushrooms, especially shiitake mushrooms, to sort of cancer prevention. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Anti-cancer effects. Yeah, they have. What is it? It's um. And there's a beta beta glucan, which is a. It's something that that is like um. Helpful for gut bacteria. Hmm. which is, you know, it, it's like, the thing that's interesting is a lot of stuff, when you, like, when you start seeing, like, cancer properties around things, a lot of times it's, it's, it does that because it, inc it improves um, immune function, which is a kind of gut-mediated response. Now this, this article mm -hmm. also talks about beta glucans. um, this type of fiber can lower cholesterol. Yep, yep. So. All right, so I finished the mushrooms. Okay. Now I'm going to take a spoon and just peel the ginger. And, and all you do is just use the edge of the spoon and just, because this way it doesn't, you don't have to worry about cutting your finger off and it, it doesn't like cut up a bunch of the uh, ginger. Now, the ginger you would put no matter what sort of uh, vegetables or protein you have. Yes. I would because I think it's kind of what gives it that, you know, kind of uh, like kind of a Asian component to it. I'll, I love ginger and um, uh, jalapeno together. I just think that in, in um, uh, garlic, they, I think they just play together real well. And then when you throw fish sauce in with it, well, y'all know how I feel about fish sauce. Mm -hmm. So you're just peeling, about how much ginger are you using? That's, you know, like kind of a long skinny thumbs worth. Okay. You know, and what I'm going to do with it is I'm just going to slice it real thin. You know, I, I don't make smoothies all the time, but when I make a smoothie, I almost always put ginger in it. Um, it's also another one of those things that's like, you know, it's been kind of touted as it supports immune function. 
certainly aids digestion as well. It aids digestion. Here's the other thing that's interesting. There is a paper, it was part of a guy's PhD um, uh, research, and, and they looked at um, ginger and some of the elements that were in it was, was actually one of the only things they found that, that, that reversed uh, osteoarthritis. Hmm. They, I mean, they literally did it for that they, and I think it was, it was rats because no people wanted to volunteer to have their kneecaps cut open. But, but they would, they like fed this stuff to the rats and then they went in and did like autopsy stuff and, and looked at the, the knee joints and the ones that they'd given the ginger to, and they were actually able to reverse arthritis with them. Yeah. So eat your ginger. And tell people to stay away from your kneecaps. There you go. Ginger mm -hmm. All right. So I'm just cutting this as thin as I can. Okay. And I'm not going to chop it just because it will cook, you know, because I'm going to be putting it in a super hot skillet anyway for the wok. So I just want it real thin and then pop that in here. So I'm just putting it back in the bowl. Now I'm going to smash the uh, two cloves of garlic to get the skins off of them. Yeah. Well, that's out of the way of that. All right. And you know, there's there's like tools and stuff out there for peeling garlic, and you know, I've got one of them and it works pretty well. But you know, this seems to be fairly effective. Similar thing to wash. Yeah. Like so. Yeah. Yeah, I will use a garlic press if I'm like I made uh, gazpacho the other day and I used a garlic press for that. We may do gazpacho sometime. Maybe we'll do it one one of the maybe the one in July if I can get enough tomatoes. That was uh, that was just phenomenal. It was. It really was. It was very very refreshing. refreshing. Yeah. Summer. Yeah, I had always heard of it, and I think I may have had it once in a restaurant, but I never fixed it before. And it's simple to fix, and man, it's good. And now it's just the season for tomatoes, so yes. it's a good time for just All right, get this out of the way. Okay, then how are you going to chop the... So, uh, once again, I'm just going to cut it super fine. Okay, a lot like the ginger. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is, you know, I'm using the... Uh, so you're not um, mincing it. You're no, I'm not going to mince it because, once again, it'll, it, because of the wok will be so hot, it would have more of a tendency to burn. Okay. So, I'm just, you know, I'm using, this is one, so instead of using, you know, that part of my knuckle, I'm using it just kind of down the flat of my fingernail. Because I just want to see how thin I can get it. Also, see you have an onion over there. You're going to be checking? yep. Okay. Yep. And now I'll do the same. Any other vegetables or protein as well? Yep. So having an onion in there is a good thing. Yeah, it's that's one of those kind of universal condiments for me. It's like I almost always add onion to stuff. And it, it's another one of those things that's, you know, a lot of sulfur in it. And early on when I was kind of doing all the health research stuff, I read some stuff by uh, Terry Wall who had actually used her diet to reverse her um, multiple sclerosis. Hers was so bad that she was literally in a tilt wheelchair and she's like out roaming around these days. And you know, it was, she did it all with diet. And uh, you know, one of the things that she's big on is like making sure that you get multiple servings a day of sulfurous vegetables mm -hmm. and uh, garlic hat and onions both have a lot of sulfur. Mm. It's part of why it makes you fry. Mm. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the onion. I'm gonna cut the root in off here. 
And now I'm just going to slice this thing thin. So you've already, it looks like you've already chopped. Yeah, because I said a small onion, and so this is all I've got left of a giant onion. So I'm like, all right, that constitutes a small onion. Yeah. All right. And you're, the way you're, just again, slit, uh, just yep. thin slices. Thin right? slices. Okay. And, you know, I've already got a flat surface. If I didn't, I would just cut the onion in half and do it that way. And just, yeah, you know, if you can, uh, if you can read through it, great. Just as thin as you can get it. And then once it gets to where it's kind of being like, you know, precarious here because there's not enough base, and I'm just going to turn it over on the side, the flat part, mm -hmm. and we'll go that way. So I also know that you have the chicken out already. Yeah, because I wanted to get it closer to room temp. So anybody joining should yeah. we'll have that out for a while. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, it's it's going to cook faster if it's not coming out, you know, like almost mm -hmm. frozen. Will it also cook more evenly? It should. Well, yeah, but, you know, we're going to cut it into small pieces, so that'll kind of help with that. Also, does the um, oven need to be on if you're not doing cauliflower rice? Say, oh, no, not if, if you're not doing cauliflower rice, no, no need for the oven. Okay, thanks. All right, so now I've got this, the onion sliced, and we'll put this back in the bowl. And then, let's see, what, oh, the jalapeno, I'll get that. And then I'll do the chicken. I wanted, I was saving the chicken for last because I'm going to use this cutting board, and then I'll wash the cutting board off. That was actually one of the reasons I bought this particular cutting board. Um, this was one that the folks at um, Cooks Illustrated uh, recommended. I guess I needed that screen still. Um, and one of the, the tests that they did is that they um, they they call, they put salmonella on the board, and then like like just washed it with soap and water, and then checked it and it, there was no more salmonella on it. And the, the teak actually acts as kind of like an antibacteria uh, surface. And I'm gonna use the- uh, So you just slice it down? I just, I just slice, all I did was slice the end off and then slice it down the middle. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just gonna use a spoon to pull the seeds out. Yeah. My son Ryan and I were talking about this yesterday. And it's like, you know, we both made the mistake of uh, like trying to seed uh, jalapenos with our fingers. And it's like, man, you, it, it's like all of a sudden, like 30 minutes later, your hands feel like they're on fire. And it's because of that oil from the jalapeno will just kind of like soak through your skin. Yeah. So how will you cut this then? So I'm just same thing. Cut it. Okay. I'm just going to cut it super thin. Just cut, you know, just short lines. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just cutting across okay, it. I got it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you could cut it in long slivers. Um, it's a bigger pieces so. though. Yeah. And you know, fresh jalapenos for the most part are not like that fiery. Every once yeah. in a while, you get one that is, but you know, and I guess it kind of depends on how often you eat them. But what I've realized is, you know, they're not, they're, they're not that bad. Um, but I just, I've gotten where I really like the taste. All right, now I'll wash my hands off again. The soap. I guess I'll have a little, little water. There you go. Yeah, Jude and I've gotten where we're not drinking during the week, and so it's like, you know, like Sundays are a real taper day too, so. What are you, what are you drinking? Mm, I'm drinking this, what is this? It's a California Buffer Sante. I guess that's how you pronounce it, I don't know. But it's a Chardonnay, and you, we not, we've gotten this now several times. It's got kind of a, uh, 
uh, grapefruit, um, orange, thick kind of citrus. I, I really like it. It's a great taste of wine. And it's like, I think, nine bucks or eight bucks at Costco. So, okay. jalapenos in the bowl. And I'm just scraping them off in here since I've already washed the jalapeno off my hands. All right, so now then I've got all of my uh, other ingredients cut. So now the vegetables are all, cut. all the veggies are cut. Now I'm going to cut the, the uh, chicken. Okay. And what I, what I did when I put this out there is I just put it on a uh, paper towel just because I want it, I want it dry as dry as possible when I put it in there. So that way, it, instead of the heat of the skillet going to evaporate the excess moisture, it's going to immediately start browning and cooking the chicken. So I'm just going to do this now. These are just chicken. Yeah, these are like chicken, chicken tenders. So okay. they're, it's like fillets of a chicken breast. Okay. And they're, you know, it's, they're, they're quick cooking. Um, the, normally these come like three of these little packets on a, or, are a uh, kind of an order's worth, you know, a package from Costco. And this is two of those three packets. So it's probably like, probably a couple of pounds. Yeah. So this thing's going to be kind of protein heavy because mm -hmm. obviously there's more chicken than there is anything else, yeah. which I don't see a thing wrong with that. The advantage also, also of the cauliflower rice is that's another vegetable. It is. It yeah. is. You're, that's a good point. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and I don't like leaving something hanging around that's got, uh, yeah. you know, chicken love on it. So I'm going to hit this real quick with the soap. Now I, used, I worked with a guy years ago that was just sick for like, like months, and it turned out he had gotten some weird strain of salmonella. And so I'm just ever since then I'm just like, yeah, be careful with this stuff. And what they figured out with him was that he had done that that whole thing they tell you not to do, which was to wash the chicken in the sink, and I guess splattered some of it on the counter. And uh, so anyway, I just you know, chicken is one of those things I just don't mess with. It's like I make sure okay, so that, yeah, so what I'm doing is I'm cutting, you know, I, what I said in the, the instructions was bite size. Okay. So, you know, just what I'm looking for is kind of uniform sizes. And it's not, I'm not like, you know, like exact with it, but I don't want to be trying to like cut pieces this size with pieces like that. So that way, because it'll all cook about the same amount of time. And I'll put this in in probably a couple of batches because one of the things that you want is that you want the, the wok to get really hot and you want it to stay hot. Well, if you put too much food in at one time, you're going to you're going to cool the wok down. This, this will make several meals, actually. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the thing about this is that, you know, it is, uh, it, it's super nutritious and it's, you know, per, like, you could eat this, like, on a real regular and, it, it, you know, it is, uh, it, this, this is the, this is the kind of food that'll make you lean. Because it's got plenty of protein in it, it's not super high in fat, it's um, you know pretty low carb. And the other, the the the, uh, the most essential piece is it tastes great. Because life's too short to eat sad food. This is a lot of chicken. It is. You know, I could have gotten away with, with one packet, but it's just like, you know, this is all right. Because you can always add extra vegetables. Yeah. 
And then are you going to tell us ahead of time what the process would be for yes. picking them? Great. Yeah. So, you know, what it's going to be is we're just going to get that bad boy hot and we're going to keep it hot. Okay. All right. So I'm going to. So then you're going to just cook one sort of one or two ingredients at a time? Yes. Yeah. Oh, so wash my hands. I don't get chicken goo all over the handle of the knife. And just get this thing if I need it again while we're cooking. Knives are something that it's like for me, I always, you know, I like to clean them off when I'm done and, you know, put them back in the block. Just for number one, I'm not having to worry about cutting myself on it. Number two, I know exactly where it is. So if I need it right away, it's available. All right, so I'm going to put the chicken in here in a bowl. All right, now then, wash the cutting board in my hands again, and we'll be on to the cooking part. And this is one of those deals where I just, I touched the handle with my hand that had chicken on it. So, you know, that'll be one where I'll Pose that thing down with uh, this stuff that we have. Like, it's, what is it? It's some kind of a yeah. It's yeah, and it's a um, it's got thyme oil in it. It's not used. So just FYI, you have about a little less than four minutes left on the Perfect. timer. Great. Okay. Yeah, it's like I said, the prep was 20 minutes. I lied, it's probably 30. Okay. Prep takes much longer than the actual cooking. Oh, the cooking, is. we're about ready to be done. Yeah. So. Do you want to check the? Yeah. And then what I want to do is get this stuff okay. over here. I'm just moving these. So they're all going to be available. That is a third of a cup of chicken stock, and that's about a third of a cup of wine. Here's our sauces. I'm going to go ahead and take the tops off of them so they're ready. And then so watch those elbows. Make sure they don't get knocked over. Yeah, I know. And then make sure that doesn't get knocked over. All right. Fish sauce. Yeah, I was looking at this one. I need to buy some more now. All right, so let me check on this first. Yeah, it's kind of just starting to crisp up a little on the outside. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kill the, the flame on that, and we'll just let it coast. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to get my uh, handy portable burner. And... Cooking this, you are going to have it on a high flame. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. Pretty much. I'm going to. Yeah, that's cranking pretty good. It's about halfway. So, I mean, it could go higher, but I don't need it really any higher than that. that that's like a super high flame on the stove. So, you're going to let it get warm before you put the oil in? Okay. No, I'm not going to let it get like screaming. But what I'm going to do is let it to where I can just see kind of like some wisp of smoke. And then all I'm going to do is just put just enough avocado oil in to where that I can kind of swirl it around and it'll coat the bottom. Okay. Okay. And I'll start with the, the mushrooms. I mean, it, it, there really is no like kind of rhyme or reason. I just kind of start working through the ingredients. Okay. And then you'll cook mushrooms and put them in the bigger bowl. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I'll probably, like, when I put the mushrooms in, I'll let them go by themselves for just a second. Mm -hmm. And then I'll add, like, I'll go ahead and add the uh, garlic. I'll add some of the other ingredients okay. in with those. Okay. Okay, so I'm starting to see just a touch of smoke. So now I'm just going to put just a touch of this in. Yeah, there we go. What is and that's like maybe a teaspoon. a teaspoon. Yeah, okay, and I'm just out. all I'm gonna do now is just swirl it around because all I want is just the bottom of it. 
coded. All right. So that's going. Now, in go the mushrooms. And I'm going to put like half of those in. Oh, really? Yeah, because if I put them all in at once, then it's going to, uh, you know, like cool it off more. So when you put when you put a uh, room temperature thing in something that's hot, okay, it's like cools the the right. surface off. Okay. So you only cook half of them at a time, or you yeah, okay. yeah. And I'm actually turning it up because I want this thing sizzling. There we okay. go. You can start to hear it sizzling yeah. a little bit. And I'll tell you what, we'll put and I just kind of season as I go. I'm just throwing a little bit of uh, soy sauce in there. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, I like salt food as I go. Well, this, in essence, that is salting it. And it gives it a little bit. And, and it has a lot of umami to it. Yeah. And I get some liquid to cook it in. Yeah. Well, a little bit, you know, there, I mean, this, the surface of this thing is completely dry right now. How, like, when will you stop cooking? I'm just, I'm, what I'm doing is just kind of looking for the change in, in like texture. Okay. okay. The other thing I like about not using so much oil is now I'm just going to dump it in here. I don't have to worry about like, you know, scraping the oil off. Can you show us what one mushroom looks like so you just have a sense oh, here. of, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it, you can just feel yeah, it. It's, it's yeah. Like, yeah, darker. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go ahead. In fact, I'm not going to add more oil this time. I'm just going to toss these in there. And I will um, add a little bit of soy sauce. And over here. We're just going to. Hang out for a couple of seconds. It doesn't, I mean, really, you know, this is only about maybe a minute with each ingredient. So at least I think we can use a little, uh, little ginger. Actually, we'll do the ginger and the garlic with the onions. Okay. They all cook relatively about the same. Mm -hmm. And they're, yeah. And, and their kind of flavor works all together, and then we'll just toss. And then probably the next thing is I'll do the I'll do the chicken, I'll do the asparagus, probably last. Is it, is it what next? After the uh, after the mushroom, I okay. mean after the onions with the garlic and ginger, okay. then I'll do the chicken. Oh, okay. Because I want those that garlic and ginger to hang out with the chicken for a little while. Oh, okay. And the asparagus last. Yeah, because yeah, the asparagus is going to be super fast. So are you still just on the mushrooms right now, or did you already add the onions? Say again? Did you already add the onions and stuff, or are you still just no, on the I'm mushrooms? No, I'm doing that next. Yeah, he decided okay. to do that next. Yeah, just mushrooms. Okay. But, but Megan, regardless, I mean, you can do it. If you've done them in that order, it's not a problem. Oh, no, I haven't added it yet. The mushrooms are all done. Now then, I'm going to put just a little bit of oil in. Wait, so you took them out of the pan when you finished? Yeah, I yeah. did. Yeah, because, mushrooms are now on. Uh, yeah. yeah. And now then, I'm putting just a touch, another about another teaspoon of oil, and I'm swirling around the bottom. It's quite crazy. It is. All right. Now then, the uh, Onions are going in. All right. And we'll go ahead and put the, the garlic in. Okay. okay. And I'm going to put the ginger in. Oh, it helps. This thing, we'll just uh, throw all these things in the pool. We're going to put the uh, jalapenos in too. Oh, I am? Yeah. Jalapenos. Yeah. All right. All right. And that's when you put the jalapenos in, you'll know real quick how good your. Uh, Ventilation is because these things can ruin you when they like start to get hot. 
Yeah. yeah. I know. Okay, and now what are you adding? I'm adding some fish stock because it's not okay. stinky enough. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, this will, I was I ordered an omelet once at this place, and when this when the guy like put the put the jalapenos in that skillet, it was like we all got tear gas. We were all coughing and hacking, and everybody was like, "What the hell's going on?" It's like blame this guy over here. He was the one that wanted this omelet. Well, that that is full of aroma. Yeah. It, yeah, it is. But you know, that's kind of what, it, my favorite food is stuff that has those strong flavors. Yeah. And you know, so it's like the onions are starting to get kind of like translucent. There's a couple of bigger pieces that are in there, but those will just not be quite as, uh, as done as the other ones. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of, Letting this hang for just a second. Other thing about a wok is you can kind of push stuff up to the sides just a little bit. You now I've kind of got this spot in the middle. It'll get a little bit hotter. Now I'm going to put this stuff back in there again. It's this. Yeah. In just a second, I'm getting ready to dump all of this in the thing with the mushrooms and then I'll do the chicken. Uh, like I said, I'm going to do it in batches. All right, this is all going in here. Let me. Uh, yep. Okay. Got that. Now we'll let this thing get hot again. But just a touch of foil on the bottom. Okay. Sorry, you took the onions out and put them with the mushrooms and stuff? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Put them in that bowl. Yeah. Yep. All right. Now, just going to coat this around on the inside again. Should each thing be like the mushrooms, the onions, and the jalapenos and everything be fully cooked before you take them out? Or are we going to put them back in at some point all together? Well, we're going to cook them all together, but they really should be pretty cooked because okay. it. You know, that's the thing about when you cut them in small pieces, they just cook really fast. Okay. Okay. And so. So, like onions kind of translucent. Yeah. And like I'm putting like that much chicken in, and I'm going to hit, yeah. I, so, I haven't put any of the toasted in, the toasted sesame oil. I'll put a little of that in. I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands and probably put the chicken in with it. I could just wipe it off on this, but you know, I am a little on the anal retentive side when it comes to uh, raw chicken. All right, so okay, a little so sesame oil. Okay. And then now I'm just going to stir this around. How do you know when the chicken is? It's just, you know, it, you'll see it, it's more like white all over. Okay. You know, because like right now it looks like raw chicken. But yeah, it, that's one that we want to get it cooked before we move it because I'm not going to have it in the um, uh, like recombined state long enough to cook it if it's still raw. Yeah. So everything really needs to get pretty cooked. Yeah, but here's the thing if I have an onion that is not fully cooked, yeah, that's, okay. that's no harm, no foul. If I had chicken, yeah. you know, chicken is one of the few things that I just don't have any desire for medium rare. You know, I don't mind, like, I don't cook chicken breast as high as, as a lot of the temps recommend because I've, like, looked at the whole kind of time under temp stuff and know, all right, I can get away with some of it. But when it comes to, you know, Chicken breast like this, I want it where it's not going to be like raw on the inside. But you know, just from a let's just see something here out of curiosity. Okay, 
can bring a thermometer? Yeah, where is it? I don't know. It's not in there. Wow. Do you have it out hell? somewhere? Do you have it out? I think I have it in my pocket. Mm. No. My goodness. It's not out. I don't think so. Sorry, what, what all did you add to the chicken so far? Did you or did you add sesame oil and yeah, fish just sauce? a little bit of sesame oil. Just a little bit of sesame oil. It's not over there by the bowl. Mm -mm. I swear. I know. I know. The uh, universe is like off center right now. Oh well. Fortunately, I have like four of them, but I just don't have another one. Close to I don't want to be on the screen otherwise I'd go back for you because you know there's that men looking for things being oh, here you go. Uh, there you go. As soon as you said that, uh -huh. you yeah, it seems like 142, that he says already. Yeah, that one's 121. It needs a little bit more time. And also, it's going to continue to cook as it goes in there. Okay. Let's just stay on it. Don't want to leave the Yeah, it's not. It's not. You know, raw chicken looking on the inside. That's the thing I like about this spatula. It's kind of versatile. All right, that's done. Rest of the chicken in? Or no, because it's, there's, I mean, too much. Yeah. If it was not quite so, you know, monstrous a quantity, then I would say yes. All right. So we'll put about half of what's left in there. Okay. Are you going to add more sesame oil with this as well? Yeah, just okay. a touch. And then if you've not added any salt along the way. Well, because with the um, uh, uh, fish sauce and the soy sauce, those are those capsules. So then I'll, you know, this is one of those where you want to adjust it at the end. But it's, a, it's easy when you're using. Uh, Soy and fish sauce to over salt something if you're not careful. And that's the one thing that I figured out over the years with salt is that, you know, you just, I never want anything that I'm salting to taste salty when I'm finished. Yeah. Megan, just know I just muted you in case you have a question. We'll have to remove it. Right. Wait, so so all the is on the chicken right now is sesame oil. Yes. Yes. Okay. A and um, a little bit of fish sauce. Oh. <laughs> Can I sub that for soy sauce? <laughs> Hi, yeah, absolutely. You ought to know that fish sauce is like an essential ingredient that every house should have at all times. That I actually have some in my fridge. I'm just choosing not to use it. <laughs> it definitely has a unique odor and taste. Yeah, but I just think it makes everything it goes in, you know, with a few exceptions. Yeah. I, I don't know that I'd be a big fan of it and yogurt, but um, I mean, who knows? I guess if I was making a sauce with the yogurt, probably. As long as it's not overused, yeah. there, there are uh, limits. Yeah. yeah, ice cream, I don't think it would really be a big, you know, improver. Like any, any like savory sauces I make pretty much always have some fish sauce in it. 
make sure it's that money, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I found this um, this the sriracha the other day. It's Central Market. It's uh, Underwood Rancher. Steve the sauce. What I like about it is it's red jalapenos, distilled vinegar, sugar, garlic, water, salt, and xanthan gum. What, uh, yeah, it's got sugar in it, but the thing is, it doesn't have any of the kind of funky preservative stuff, mm -hmm. which is what I'm always looking for on sauces, because a lot of them just have like a bunch of unnecessary baggage. All right, let's see how this one comes. Now it's still a little pink on the other side. Yep. So to answer your question, yeah, we are using it on high. Let's it up. Mm -hmm. This thing, I got it at a restaurant supply place for it wasn't very much, like maybe fifty or sixty dollars. The that this little portable, oh, yeah. 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 And what's great about it is you can set it up on just about anything, mm -hmm. and it cranks the heat. And it uses it uses these little butane fuel canisters. You get those at the restaurants and pot place too. And it's like, man, it's been great because I was going to get an induction. I bought an induction cooktop, but when you put a stainless steel skillet on it, all of a sudden it starts to like because it uses some kind of magnetic field. It like started floating the pan. I was like, man, that could have all kinds of horrible outcomes. This is what restaurants use like for omelet uh, omelets. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is the omelet station for stuff. But you know, like if you were going to do a picnic or something out and you wanted to cook and they didn't have like um, grills or anything set up, you know, you, you could literally just kind of take your walk and that and, mm -hmm. you know, do your picnic or your cookout. I think this is just about ready. Yeah. It looks pretty fast. It does. I mean, that's the beauty of this. You know, I lied when I said, you know, I have not, this has not been a very truthful session because uh, I said it was going to take 20 minutes of prep. It took 30. You, know, you did put it chat a bit. Yeah, I guess. I want to do that. That's where if you had others helping, you can mm -hmm. be much quicker. See, I, I do think that stir fry is a great uh, communal deal. Everybody can be involved in the prep. And then it's like, you know, the actual cooking part goes fast. So after you um, do the chicken, you're going to do the asparagus. Yep. And then, then I'm going to put it, and I'm going to do the sauce, exactly. and then I'm going to throw everything back in the pool. Okay. And for this, I think we'll put. I'll tell you what I'm just going to put just a touch of the white wine. Okay. Not very much. There we go. So that's chicken white wine. You're going to add yeah. any sesame oil also, or yeah, might as well. Great suggestion. <laughs> I'm thinking about the plant. I'm thinking my canister could be getting ready. Yep, it just died. Oh, All right, so that's why I have the other one in here. Okay. I'm just going to set this here. Yep. Yeah, this is. Uh, Right. 
take long to heat back up. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like when your propane tank burns out. You know, I say it, it, it is if you don't have any more canisters, but yeah. fortunately when I bought it, I bought a case of those things and they weren't they weren't that much. They last two months. Yeah, they do. I mean it's like I said, this thing has been one of those kind of uh this pleasant discovery. Yeah. You know, something that I didn't get out, but it would also be really good with this, is salt to make seeds. Hmm. In fact, I'm going to look. I have this, I have this uh, basket over here that has all kinds of stuff. Hmm. But of course, they're not, uh, yes, they are. There's some right here. Sesame seeds. So I'm just going to sprinkle some on the top. These are unholed, which I'm not sure what that means. They're holed and unholed. I think these are just like a little hardier. Okay. Funny, every time I hear this, whenever I'm um, packing this thing against the inside of it, I owned a hot tub and sauna company a long time ago. It was next door to a Chinese food, food restaurant. And every once in a while, anytime I had something super heavy to move, I would get the guy that was the, one of the owners to come help me. And he was this guy from Vietnam, and his forearms were about half again the size of mine. And he was as strong as he could be. But every time I would go back in that kitchen, number one, it was crazy hot. But that sound of that mm -hmm. spatula hitting that wok is what I'll always remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he and I picked up some heavy hot tubs together. And I bet he didn't weigh 150 pounds soaking wet. Wow. Yeah, but he was this. Um, yeah, per, per pound, probably one of the strongest people I've ever been around. How's it looking? It's looking good. I think it's pretty much ready to get transferred. Yep. All right. All right, so now that I'm gonna let this get just screaming again. Add a little more. Just a touch, yeah. Just avocado oil? Or yeah, that's, with this stuff, when I'm cooking at real high heats like this, I would rather use it. Yeah. You know, you and I saw that article the other day, there was a paper published where they were looking at, um, uh, the, like the whole thing around um, olive oil versus other oils. And they were looking at like smoke points because they always had thought that was the indicator of the health of the oil as far as high heat goes. What they found was that because olive oil has an antioxidant property to it, it was even a healthier oil at a higher temperature than, than some of the other oils with high smoke points. Or higher smoke points. Hmm. So yeah, I but I just you know the thing I like too about avocado oil is that it doesn't have much of a taste to it. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you're going to get this yeah. olive oil you know influence on what yeah. you're doing. All right, I'm just going to put just a touch of salt. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. mm -hmm. And then we're going to dump it in just a minute. And then we're going to build a sauce and then pour everything back in. Okay. And with the sauce, all I'm going to do is this I'm going to use uh, uh, chicken stock and white wine vinegar and some um, uh, 
all that. Uh, cornstarch. Yeah. And it's the stuff that I got was like a, I found a non GMO cornstarch, which I like. There's a lot of corn is GMO. And the issue with that is that stuff that's GMO generally, the reason it's GMO is so that they can spray Roundup on it and kill it. It's like, I don't really need any Roundup. Thank you. I'm going to be just fine without it. So, what are you looking for in the asparagus? Just the color change. Okay. Yeah. Just, I wanted to get kind of that, you know, that green yeah. color that stuff does when it's uh, the cooking. It's still a little crispier. Mm -hmm. al, mm -hmm. al dente. Al dente. Yeah. Al dente, but it's certainly not too raw. Yeah, I don't want it raw, but I do want it. I want it a little caramelized. But, Getting closer. Yeah. We've gone over to Alamar. We have. Okay. And we started a little bit late. But Not that late. Yeah. All right. I think we're good here. I'm going to dump that in there. Now then, I'm going to put the wine. Oh yeah, and the chicken stock. Now I'm going to put the cornstarch. I'm just going to stir it and add it. I want it to thicken up a little bit. I just want to see if I can get it to thicken up just a touch. Okay. If not, then I'll grab some more cornstarch. And I think it should here in just a second. So you could keep stirring it yeah, just, the whole time? Yeah. Just, I wanted to make sure it was all mixed up. Okay. Another thing that's going to happen is that we're going to cook off some of the alcohol from the wine. Yeah, it's getting a little bit of a glossy here it's which is kind of what we're looking for. Okay. Okay, sorry, I kind of messed up. So I found chicken broth. I forgot to get stock. Is that the same thing? Yeah, it is. Yeah. And how, how much did you put in there? I did about a third of a cup. About a third of a cup of wine, a third of a cup. But you could do half a cup, either one. Oh, actually, never mind. This is expired. <laughs> oh. Well, oh, maybe I won't make the sauce. <laughs> Okay, yeah, well, that sucks. Yeah, that's a bummer. <laughs> you can use in place of that. Oh. I mean, that's okay. I feel like that's a tough one to replace. <laughs> All right. I mean, it'll still be good without it. Yeah, it's true. There's enough flavor and layers mm -hmm. in the stir fry with all the other stuff, with the right. sauces you put on. So now then, let's see. Yeah, I think I want to. Yeah, it's starting to get a little thicker. What do you want in there? A little thicker? Just a touch, maybe. I don't want it like oh gloppy. Yeah. I'm just going to put probably about maybe about quite a teaspoon. All right, so now that we've got to really crank that so it doesn't come off. But I'll think of it to see if I can unclump it. Unclump it. Unclump it. So now I just have to smash it. Uh -oh. That's all right. I 
it's better to make a slurry before you put it in there. Yeah. But, oh, with the coin cut. Yeah, but this will work because it is thickening it up some. Great. I'll just make sure you get all the pieces with the clumps. All right. There we go. What's that thing? The cabinet door is for us. Close that cabinet door there oh. for us. Thank you. They probably want to see what's in there. All right, there we go. Everything back in. All right, everything back in. Yeah. So even if you don't have a sauce, you should put everything back in. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, because we want to get, because there is, in essence, has been kind of soft made as we went okay. with all the different, you know, stuff that we put in there. You know, the fish sauce and the soy sauce and the um, uh, toasted sesame. So now this wine's going out. Oh, no. Yeah, I didn't put another can. But that's fine, because we've got everything. I've got the sauce done. This is already in there. We're good there. All right, so here's what we're looking at. This is our finished ingredient, mm. all right? Yummy. Now, you know, I'm going to put uh, the the cauliflower rice down and then I'll just put this on top. But, you know, the thing that to kind of take away with from this is that the, the whole thing around stir fry is it's a great way to just use whatever veggies and meat that you have. I mean, you know, I wouldn't, I mean, you could even do like, if you had chuck roast and you cut it really thin, it's going to be tougher than if you've got sirloin. But if the whole thing is getting the pieces cut small and then not leaving them in there for a long time, because like, especially if it's like steak and stuff, it can be like medium rare. Okay, if it's chicken, obviously you want it, you know, cooked, done. If it's shrimp, you know, that cooks so fast. Okay. Yeah. But but it's like, you know, you can experiment with different vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, and then also start kind of playing with some of the different flavor profiles that you like. So I, I, I want to thank you for joining and, uh, you know, ha have, a, have a great rest of the week. I will we'll, we'll redo this. Uh, we'll do another one in the middle of July. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.